Okay. Let's test the audio and see where we are. I think we're live again. I'm going to hit the gain up a bit. Let's test that. Can you answer that, please? Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing, testing. How are we sounding now? Still not good? Thank you, S. Decker. Stay with me, okay? We're going to fix this up right now. Okay. Testing, 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 testing. Testing, testing. How do we sound now? Volume is better, but sound is still distorted. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to increase the bit rate for the audio sampling. And see if that changes things. Bear with me a moment, people. Thank you for staying with me, by the way. Tools. Settings. Still distorted. Okay. So. All right. What I'm doing right now, if you're curious, is I'm trying to up the bit rate for the audio. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, testing. How we sound now? Any better? Testing, testing. Hmm. Okay. Bear with me, folks. I'm still working on this. Are we good now? Does that sound all right? Are we normal? Perfect. Thank you, S. Decker. I appreciate that. All right. We're good to go. Sorry for the delay, folks. A little technical snafu, but we should be back up and running. All right. Tech guy away. Enjoy, everybody. You should be good to go. Okay. No, that's okay. I was late too. <laughs> okay, I've been warned. Next time you don't touch anything. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy that we're here today to do um, the knit along. Yeah, that's cool. So let me see here. Oh, there I am on my phone trying to. Ugh. Just gonna turn that off. Okay, so did everyone give swatching a try? I know it's not the most favorite thing um, for a lot of knitters, but it actually is pretty crucial to swatch unless you. Oh, good! I see S. Decker Knight. 918 said yes or was that to the sound being better oh well <laughs> sandra dawn design says yep uh i don't know how to say your name uh, uh did you complete it <laughs> no that's okay i didn't i i started a second swatch so i could do some tutorials like Put on YouTube and did I complete that one mm -mm. but I do have this one this lovely one my first one done oh you had to change yarn um, DFT 
a band. <laughs> she had, had to change yarn. Interesting. Oh, Sarah Dawn Designs, you just found out about the knit along right now. So you haven't swatched yet. The yes was with the sound problems. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Okay, no worries. <laughs> well, what I did, um, I use a company called MailChimp to like use for a database to basically run these kind of tutorials. Pavement Girl said I did half the swatch and just extrapolated the calculation because I was short on time. You know what? That's probably, that's pretty fine. As long as you could measure the rows by, you know, an inch. I mean, even if the hat's a little off in the height, it's a slouchy. Okay? I'm talking about her. But we don't want it to be too tight around, right? That's, that's the thing. So I think you're probably good. Really? So J.S. Kaplan said, first time trying this, did a smaller swatch with two yarns. Uh, worse, it was way too big. Oh, that's interesting to know. I know that when I picked out my yarn, I used... I just heard a really weird noise. Okay. <laughs> when I picked out my yarns, um, I chose Cascade. Uh, I just love the feel of Cascade 220. So I was like doing it along. It's like, yeah, I love this. Um, and then uh, when I would go on to Ravelry to post my, you know, my lovely project page, I noticed that Cascade 220 does not come up in the worsted category. So I think it's like that little like cusp, you know what I mean? So anyway, that's what happened, um, but you know the squat, the the squash, the squash. I think I have. I think I have zipper on the line. I'm sorry. Um, the swatch really tells you so much information. So if you did not receive, or somehow if the file got lost, the um, part one the swatch, which actually has all of the uh, key information in it, like uh, the abbreviations and whatnot, um, you simply uh, go to my website, which is nindesigns.ca, and just follow, actually, you know what, I'm going to type it in, because it's easier to do, I think. Sorry for like this extreme close up. <laughs> oh yes, and you're going home, tech guy. I'm going home. I'm good. Everything is set. Everything's working. Okay. I'm gonna go home and watch from there once the internet's up. Okay. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye. What did I put in there? I can't even tell. Is that? Look, if you had to move the microphone. Ninda, I know. Nines. Ca. Okay. There we go. Don't forget to get followers. Okay. Because that, uh, that'll help you um, figure out what I'm doing in the future. Also, you, if you get enough followers, you get your, your channel gets upgraded and you get all kinds of extra functionality for your viewers. Very cool. Quick question. Why is my little head box in red? Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, it's because the layers are in the same pile. Oh. You really want to get all that. No, no, no. You, you go home. Yeah, do your thing. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you so much for helping me out. Uh, you're you're always so good. The, uh, it's always so good to me. By, uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Um, so, yes. Okay. So Sarah Dawn Designs is going to start, she says she signed off for a moment so she can go check out the pattern and download it because you can download it from the link that I just posted in, uh, in the chat. Let um, me see. Pavement Girl said Malabrigo. Oh, Malabrigo. Rios worked well. 
And Saskia GRB said, to me, it feels like a thicker DK. Like the, you mean like the Cascades 220? So, yeah. Um, J.S. Kaplan says, I tried a few times with the cast on, finally figured it out, but I also found the cable needle uncooperative. Now trying with the straight needle. Yes, I agree. I, um, I would definitely do it with the straight. Honestly, and in fact, I'm going to cast on right now so I can, we can work li live. Um, does everyone have their yarn and that they're going to use for their hat with them right now and your supplies? If not, don't worry because I'm pretty sure this records and then we can just, you can just watch it as a rerun, which is kind of cool. Um, but I thought we would just give that a good old fashioned hee ho go. Uh, I'm just going to move my swatch. I don't normally keep swatches. Here's a designer tip. Like I swatched in the round and you can see how I put floats around the back. Um, I did soak it with soap and water and I just kind of patted it dry. And, oh, Saskia, you say, so sorry to say I got my part done. <laughs> well, if, if you don't mind hanging around, if there's people with questions and I'm looking down and, you know, doing something, maybe you could answer in the chat if you, if you want. I would love that. Anyone who wants to jump in on the chat and say something, hopefully nice, <laughs> that's helpful, feel free, like totally. This is all about chatting. Yeah, but anyway, um, I don't normally keep my swatches. I usually uh, completely destroy them after I make them and use the fiber to uh, a sample, or yeah, my, my project, but I call it a sample because it goes in my sample box, right? For when I do photo shoots or if I'm going to give it to like say a hat shop for what, what are those called trunk shows um yeah so this time I actually kept the sample because I wanted all of you folks to see how I did it in the round for the sample reason why um most knitters when they do the um when they purl, the purl stitch is different on straights going back and forth on the row than it is when you do it in the round. So most knitters are like that. Um, oh, J.S. Kaplan, you're, you asked, why don't we do the swatch flat without the long floats? The odd rows could be worked from left to right or is the tension different that way? It is. Unless you are a pro knitter. And what I mean by pro knitter, I mean like your tension is freaking spot on no matter how you knit. Um, like we're talking like, what is that? The, the people who get their degrees with the knitting guild or something, you know, they work at the levels. Um, so yeah, I do not suggest for like uh, my tension is not spot on when I do um, back and forth or if I do it um, as rows and then I compare it to my in the round, there is a difference for me. Um, and since I'm so anal protective, <laughs> I really don't, like if I'm gonna knit in the round, I'll swatch in the round because I want it to be as exact as possible for um, anyone who, you know, purchases my patterns or if they're just going to knit my patterns, I just want it to be the best experience possible. So that's why I do that. Um, but that saying, if you can do it and you are 
like a machine and there is people like that my mother is one of them um yeah do it however you want but for for us average mortals <laughs> sorry mom <laughs> um we do it i like it's best to do it in the floats um Okay, so Donut Steel says, if, now the reason why, just let you all know, I'm reading it out loud, the questions, just because um, some viewers have difficulty seeing the text on the, um, their screens. So if I read it out loud, then it just makes it easier. And plus, if I turn this into like an audio stream later, you know, podcast kind of thingy, um, we've got the questions, hey. Uh, okay. So Donut Steel says, is there a way to improve stitch definition in the cabled areas? I was using Barocco Vintage, love Barocco Vintage, and a size seven needle, and it looked quite uneven. Hmm. So when you say the cabled areas, I'm just gonna get you to, to let me know are you talking about the crossing over of stitches? Um, like here, do you see how they cross? Oh, why is this focusing? Yeah, it is. Do you mean that, that we've got stitches looking wonky? Because if, if that is an issue, there is a way to fix that. Um, you could try purling slightly different a purl stitch as we all know like we wrap it uh clockwise when we do it purl wise we, like we stick the needle in purl wise and then we wrap the yarn around it's clockwise right but um isolde teague who wrote the book little red in the city if you've not bought a copy oh it is a wealth of information i love she suggests that okay so donut steel says yeah exactly those parts stitches look a bit lopsided okay you are knitting through the knits through the back of the loop correct even when you even when you cross them the knits are still knit through the back of the loop i just want to verify that with you So while we're waiting for Donut Steel to um, answer, because I think that is a really, really good question, because um, a lot of people have problems with that. There is a way where, do you see how we have the knit column and it's followed by the purl? Normally with, twits, with twisted stitches, it doesn't tend to do this, but the extra fabric from the purl, because you know how we loop clockwise, or, or sorry, how do we do that? We can put our purl in. Yeah, so it wraps around the needle one full revolution. Okay. Yes, it looks like there's more yarn on the right side of the stitch than the left. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking it's the pearls. Um, it's just a matter of getting used to, you might need to purl and knit through the back of the loop just a pinch tighter, just to kind of get that. Now, sometimes when I'm knitting along, Let's pretend I'm, I'm knitting along and I work one of these stitches. I will just simply like tug a little bit just so that I, uh, I'm distributing some of the extra fiber across. I know that sounds a little weird, but I, I especially do that when I cable. I just give a little you know snap just to to do that the other thing you can do is wrap your pearls the eastern way 
And the Eastern way is when you wrap it the opposite of how you normally wrap it, which is the Western way. Um, it's only a half a revolution of yarn. So technically it's half the fabric to um, go into the purl stitch. Therefore, there's less to travel there's less to travel back and less to be yanked forward. That's a tip that Isolde Teague gave in her book, Little Red in the City, which I highly recommend that you buy if you really love knitting and you wanna, and you wanna up your game. Like, she's awesome. Um, <laughs> I don't get any kind of sponsorship or affiliate plug links or whatever for that but just just a tip you know if you want to expand your library totally would do that um other than that donut steel i would say wrap uh or try to knit a, a pinch tighter and just give it a little like you know when you switch and you kind of give it a little snap um not to break it but just a little snap uh, after you do the stitch so that we get the yarn to kind of like move. Now, here's the other thing. Oh! <laughs> Donut Steel says, I will give that a try. Awesome! I'm usually a very, very tight knitter, so I was trying to loosen up a bit. <laughs> I'm a tight knitter too. I'm not a needle squeaker, but I am tight because I just like the look of a nice firm garment, right? Um, yeah, that would work. So tighten up a little pinch. Okay, so anyone have any questions, any more questions about their swatches or where to get the information to do the swatch? Um, if you scroll through the chat, I don't know if you can, I've never done that myself. If you scroll, scroll through the chat, you'll see my link, which is blog dot, and then nin designs, all one word, dot ca, and it's the latest blog post. It's got the link. You click it, download it, you're good to go. I'm going to even do that for the second part, and I think I'm going to do it for every uh part that we re that i release right up to the end of the knit along and then i'm just going to delete those and all of you folks who participated will get the full pattern and you don't have to worry about trying to keep pattern pieces and put them together because that would just be messy okay any more questions about the swatch i will be watching the chat to see but i thought what we'll do is kind of move on to doing the um the cast on i love this cast on partly because i made it up <laughs> no no that's not the only reason um it's actually i did base a lot of it on uh what was it isolda teague's definition like she had a beautiful tutorial and it was also in the book. I don't have it here, but I have an extra copy. Um, it's like cast on, cast off. And it's in there. But I modified it a little bit because one thing I hate is when you have a knitted garment, like such as this, and you put so much time and effort into it. Come on, focus here, mister. There. Do you see that band? The stitches, oh, of course, there we go. The stitches are twisted right from the edge, right from the cast on. We do not have any straight, like normal knit stitch and then a twisted knit. You know, I just find that irritating. It could be because I'm so anal retentive. <laughs> I'd be the first to admit it. Um, so yeah, anyway, so the cast on that I teach you teaches you how to make that gorgeous um, cast on so there's no transition between 
the cast on edge and then up into the twisted knits. The other thing I like about it, if you can see it with me. Oh, for goodness sakes. There, come on, there we go. Look, look how it just wraps around. And look at the neat thing. If you turn this sucker inside out, it becomes a really neat, regular ribbing. Technically, you can wear this hat inside out. So, food for thought. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and the other thing I use it on, here's a sneak peek. This is my cowl. Oh, of course it's got a pin in it. <laughs> I was blocking it. Actually, no, I think it just got stuck in there. Ugh, break. There we go. So that's the cowl, and I use this cast on for the cowl, but we do an interrupted cast on. Right, right here. And I teach you how to do that too, so that it doesn't look jarring and it doesn't um, mess the pattern up. And the reason why I use this cast on, because the match to it is the sewn Kitchener bind off. And I know a lot of people are probably out there going, Ugh, because I mean, it's hand sewing and it's a little bit of work, but honestly, I love it. And it is the match. You cannot tell, like, where did she cast on? Where did she sew off? Right? You can't tell. And to me, that shows an advanced knitter, right? That's like very skilled. But if you have a cast off that matches the tubular twisted um, ribbed cast on, I'd love to learn another one because as much as I like hand sewing, it'd be kind of cool just to like, you know, cast off without having to do a lot of it. Okay. As you can see, I have knit this hat many, many times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get started. I have so many people bugging me right now. All right, I'm going to start with the, um, how to do the cast on. I like to, get a little bit of a measurement and I typically do that by just leaving a little bit of yarn and then I wrap around my needle. Now this one here, the needle I'm using is the smaller needle because that is what the band is made of first. Your smaller needle may not be the same as mine. Um, if you did the swatch and just to get gauge, you may use um, something down like for me to get gauge in the regular pattern stitch, um, a five millimeter was just perfect, wonderful. So then I went down to a 4.5 just to use uh, for the band. So if you had to move up or down to get swatch gauge for the larger size needle, your smaller size will be the, um, I guess the half size down. So that's what you're gonna start with. I'm choosing to start with a straight that's quite bent. You can see how tight I knit. I like bend these suckers. Um, what I usually do to measure out my yarn, and it's even stated in the pattern, um, wrap it 10 times around the yarn we're gonna just pretend this is 10. Pinch it, right? There we go. Pull that off and then I know, hey, that's 10 stitches. And then you can go like, like when we were in middle school or I, maybe in grade school, you know, when you were learning to measure with odd things. So basically you can do like this to figure out Oh, how long should I make this sucker? Um, that's one way. For me, I normally just take the 
yarn in well in my one hand hold my arm out straight bring my yarn across to about my far shoulder right across my body right straight and then that's where I'm like that's my length uh, just from you know your wingspan may be different from mine but that's how I know that 96 stitches when I cast on that's a good amount of tail length I might even add like a, just a little extra just to make sure and put in my slip knot so so I didn't see any more questions about swatches so we're going to start with the cast on and I'm gonna do it on the straight needle normally I just do it on the circular no. but this is definitely probably the much oh no I, I know it is the easier way to do it so the thing that you need to remember this is the knit stitch that starts our pattern like our beginning of the row around ball yarn uh, tail yarn so you want to make it like a slingshot and do you see how I've got it like a slingshot I'm out of the camera folks watch me turn this and that guy is gonna get freaky okay so there we are like this um, ball yarn goes over the index finger I'm sure you read the description in the part two but if not hey we'll do it together ball yarn goes over the index finger tail yarn goes over the thumb and I even have a YouTube video up on my YouTube channel. Uh, I think you just, I think all my links are there from my website and I have it in like a little bundle under, you know, the middle on. So if you need to see this again, totally YouTube, right? Okay, so tail yarn goes over thumb because T for tail and T for thumb. <laughs> I like to make a slingshot, right? As if you're gonna snap someone. I hold my yarn like so with the left hand. This is my knit stitch. First things we need to do, because we're ribbing one by one, we need to make a purl. To make a purl, whoops, wrong way. Okay, to make a purl, we're going to start from our neutral position. That's with our needle up. This is our neutral position. Maybe I'll tilt it a little. No. Anyway, we're going to swing the tip of this needle under the thumb yarn, up through the center, and then over the index finger yarn, and swing, 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 swing. And we did it wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> okay, that's how you do a knit. Sorry. Okay, so over the index finger, up through the center, and then swing over the thumb, and we swing her around and come back to the neutral position. Now, if you can see, Right there. Okay, Spoony. You're gonna see how the yarn. Oh, this nasty little camera. Well, anyway, you kind of get the. It's blurry, but you can see it. The yarn is across the stitch. And it's like the bar of a purl stitch. All right. So we have our knit, which is the slip knot. We just made our purl. We now need to make our knit. So we're going to swing our needle back and it's back in the, the central position under the thumb up through the V over the index finger and around and back to central neutral position and look what it makes. Let's see if you can see it. 
right there. Do you see how you can see like the two legs are of that stitch are wide open? So basically it's a knit stitch, but the, the legs are oriented rather funnily. Or funnily. <laughs> okay, so next thing, we're gonna do another purl. So watch the purl. We're in the neutral position again. We have our slingshot. We're gonna take we're gonna take our needle and swing it over. Did I do that? Yes, okay. <laughs> okay, we swing it over the, the index finger yarn, up through the center of the V, and then over the thumb yarn, and we're scoop, 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 scoop. And there's our pearl. Right there. So, I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's kind of looking like a ribbing right now. Okay, I'm just taking a quick look here to see. Saskia says, I'm horrible with swatches and I don't like to do them. I know, I know. Nobody likes swatching. Actually, no, that's not true. I love swatching. I hated it before, but then when I started designing and had so many people complain about what's going on, I decided, hmm, maybe there's something to that swatching thing. So that's what I did. But, you know, I'm gonna leave it up to you. Uh, if you don't wanna swatch, you know, and you're fairly confident that you're gauge is good and that you're gonna hit the right sweet spot for the pattern don't worry about it my only concern is that the pattern like the band might be too tight and I really hate that for an adult if you're making it for an adult and it won't fit them so the pattern swatch will kind of help avoid that but if you're very determined and you know your, your stitches inside out, your gauge, no worries. Okay, so we're going back with our, our cast on. So what we need to do is cast on 96 of these little stitches. Um, I've just done the purl. Yeah, because the yarn is laying across. And now I'm going to do a knit. And then you do the exact opposite for the purl. Knit, purl. Do I do this in a kind of like snug fashion? Yes, I do. Um, I like to have a band that does not flare. I find if I um, I'm a little more snug with my cast on, um, it won't flare. And that's important to me because I want my garments, when I have a finished garment, I want it to look like so stunning. People are like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? And I think all knitters, like, we all like that, right? Okay, so I've left off with a pearl. Now comes a knit. There's my knit. You can see how the little legs are. I don't know why. Is that focusing on that darn tootin' hat? Maybe that's what it is. And there's wires, wires everywhere. There. Like, see how the legs are kind of spl splayed open for the knit? And the pearl has the band across it. Anyway. Yes, okay, so Spiral Companion just had a great, great question. She says, well, not so much a question, but a statement. Um, I'd like to hear what some of you, what some of you knitters 
watching this are using as your choice of yarn, which would be great to know because there is, not everybody uses Ravelry to document their project pages. And I have to say, I, I'm a stalker on Ravelry. I love looking at people's project pages. So, and that way I find out a lot of details, but yeah, please, um, if you've got a moment, type into the chat what you um what you use what you're using for the yarn and i'd love to know what color so if you can like if it's like like a gray blue just type in gray blue you know oh you're using cascade 220 worsted weight yarn too saskia awesome what color and while you guys are doing that i'm just going to go on with my cast on and if anyone needs more cast on help, they can certainly ask me. But again, there is that YouTube tutorial. So if you need it as well. Okay, I left off at a knit stitch. Okay, so hi Karen! So Karen says she's using Cascade 220 light teal color Ooh, more like a medium dark blue lovely um and now i hope i'm saying your name right so tanuja goulet is saying i'm using barocco oh i love barocco mm. barocco ultra wool my husband's head is super large 24 inches mine is too i have a big coconut and he wants this hat in lavender because it looks like church windows oh so i swatched and got a and got a big swatch i think it will work for him awesome tastic okay um i know i sound like i'm 13 when i say that but i hang out with 13 year olds i'm so sorry um, but that is fabulous. And yes, I have a super large coconut too, like all the hair and everything. Um, so Donut Steel says she's using Barocco, Vin Ooh, Barocco Vintage Worsted for the test hat, but her final one will be out of hand spun. Oh, hand spun. I love hand spun. I like every yarn. Like I, I tend to say that, but hand spun, I've tried my hand at spinning. Very nice um light cream brown heather beautiful west point blue heather arrived today that's what saskia says hubby went to the post office to pick it up for me that's what hubbies are good for <laughs> um oh i got your spelling of or the pronunciation of your name right Tan tanuja goulet Yay! Usually I have a hard time with names and I huh, butchered them. Okay. I'm using Patton's Decor in green. Pine green, according to the label. By the way, I pronounce my name as J L A Law. J L A Law. Sorry. Okay. I will try to remember that. <laughs> um, but if I don't, actually everyone, if I don't remember how to say your name, um, it's not because I'm being rude. I, I mm, People who've been on uh, Twitch before with me, they know that <laughs> uh, I have, a, um, I actually have short-term memory. It is a lovely side effect from a, stupid accident years ago with a drunk driver i was not drunk the other guy was um so i had brain damage right not fun um so as a side note if i stop midstream when i'm talking and i have no idea what i'm talking about or if i pronounce your name wrong after you just tell me how to do it it's not because i'm trying to be rude i apologize it's just i literally can't remember and if i don't see it like if it, the chat goes so fast and I can't see it um, I will um, 
I'll try my best. Okay. <laughs> Side note. Okay. So. Okay. JLA Law says, yes, and lots of people just sound it out, and it is a mess of sound. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Do you have a pretty nickname that maybe we could use? <laughs> That's awful. I'm not going to ask that. Sorry. All right. So I'm loving the chat here. We got loads of different types of yarn coming in. Sounds so fun. Now I'm going to just keep casting on because um, I want to do this cast on. And oh, geez, I don't even know what time it is. Okay. So we've been on for... Jinya law, but the first three letters is one single letter. Jinya. In English, we probably think it's Jia law, but the first three letters, one symbol, right? That's what Tanuja Ule, um, sorry, Tanuja Gule says. <laughs> I'm lucky mine is just Nin. N I N. Ah. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to keep casting on. And you can see that with practice, it becomes so easy to do this cast on. It is my favorite. So, what the way I'm casting on right now is exactly the way that's in like the one by one long tail tubular cast on um, <laughs> books <laughs> how they say to do it like even with the Isolde, Isolde with her her book this is the first step totally the same okay so we're gonna cast on 96 stitches of this sucker and keep going I am really interested to see with the different brands of yarn how um, like how the hats are going to turn out because I have my eye on a local yarn um, producer here in New Brunswick. I don't know if you've heard of it, Briggs and Little. They make a gorgeous, very oh, sumptuously rustic looking yarn. Um, their woolen mill is just amazing and i want to do this pattern in their yarn but i don't know what happened i went to Detsum and at cricket cove in fredericton and the owner was there who by the way donna as a shout out you are very amazing love you right to death um so I ended up with Cascades, which is great because I love Cascades 220. It's just like, it's beautiful. I, I also love Rowan and I tried their super washed because um, I've made a few cows with their super washed and hats. And I really love that you can just kind of be a little more dangerous in the way that you you know take care of them right especially if you got little monkeys children that is <laughs> and uh yeah and um but when i cast it on in the rowan i was like so sad maybe it was just me maybe it was just Maybe it was the mood I was in. I don't know. Because, you know, so many things affect your gauge. Okay. I'm just going to read the chats here. So, J-L-A Law. Actually, the first three are my initials. So, it doesn't really follow any rules of pronunciation. Oh, got it right. <laughs> um... So, uh, J.S. Kaplan says, 
Oh, you have some Briggs and Little in your stash, but from years ago. You know what's cool about Briggs and Little? They are a family owned and operated mill. Um, they have sheepies on site, but there's so sadly there is not enough wool producers in Atlantic Canada for them to like get the vast amounts that they need to produce the amount that they need to sell to their clientele. So they do outsource, you know, which is fine because this comes from Australia and we all love Australia, Australian wool. Um, but their color recipes, oh, they haven't changed in years now they may have added new colors but the core colors they don't change and i love that i mean yeah you, you're going to get like different batches are going to have to have different um you know dialogues and whatnot because those things happen but if you're like madly in love with one of their colors and i love i know this is, sounds really weird I absolutely adore bright hunters orange I'm in love and I actually am gonna knit this hat out of it too because right now it's kind of dangerous out where I live in the country so oh, I'm not even in camera thing um, there's hunters like shooting off guns looking for deer which is fine I mean if you're a hunter and you want to hunt and that's how you provide uh, food for your family um go for it right I'm not against it at all. Um, yeah. So uh, basically, I don't want to be shot. <laughs> so I love the Briggs and Little Hunter Orange, and that is what I intend to make this hat out of, and to knit my dogs um, some little coats. Well, actually, they won't be little coats. They'll be massive coats. I have labs. One's particularly chubby. Um, yeah. So we can go walking. I'm just right now, I'm really afraid because the hunters are shooting quite close to the country road. Um, and I don't want to get shot. That's like... <laughs> anyway, so I've casted on my stitches and I completely forgot to count. So I'm gonna be silent or try to be silent for a moment and I'm gonna count, okay? So here's looking at that kid, we'll do that. Okay, I had calculated just a pinch too long of my tail. Rather too long than rather too short. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oof. How many's done that? You cast on and you're so happy to have the cast on done or almost done. And then next thing you know, you've run out of the long tail when you're doing a long tail cast on like I just want to cry when that happens especially um, well I'll show it probably later um, I've done this cowl this is the small size ooh, 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 maybe I'll show it this way this is the small size that's coming out and I uh, I cast it on for the big, you know those big lush ones that wrap around twice and they're really, oh, just gorgeous. Well, it's 406 stitches and I cast, I had to cast on like three times because I kept losing track and then finally I was like, Aah. so I put stitch markers in as I was casting on at this, at this point. Normally I don't, but I had to. Um, 
So Spiral Companion says, has anyone used a slightly variegated yarn? I'm wondering if the cables may not pop as well. Spiral Companion, did you give it um, a go with swatching? Like, did you notice? Like, like that was my worry with this dark. This is walnut, right? Now, under this light, because I got like so many lights on right now, this looks really light on camera, but it's not. It is a deep dark walnut. However, the hats, did I make it, is that it? The hat I made, um, it, uh, like you, you can totally see the stitch definition, right? So if it's a slightly variegated yarn, as long as it's not like really out there, funky, funky colors, um, you should have no problem, I would think. You can always just test it like with a swatch or just cast on and see how it goes. I mean, the first few rounds of the band are so simple, like you can yank them out and do it again, right? Says the woman that has done this pattern so many times. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Spiral Companion. That was, yeah, rude of me. <laughs> But yeah, I would, I would frog it if it wasn't working. Okay, Donut Steel says, a super long cast, uh, sorry, a super long, long tail cast on is my least favorite game of yarn chicken. Yes, yes, that is true. Second to the least favorite is when you, <laughs> You've done the 400 rounds uh, on, or no, sorry, 400, 406 stitches on something. And you're like one little repeat from the end and you've run out of yarn. It's like, what the heck, right? I mean, I, I could have split spice some more yarn on, but I had, to, and this was at like two in the morning when I was doing it. And I had calculated, I calculated that yarn perfectly for the cow. Mm. I was so mad because I've discovered while reading my pattern that I wrote um, I didn't change the needle size for the band of the cow. It's like, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So yeah, yarn chicken, no fun. Actually, yeah, yarn chicken, no fun anytime really. All right, so I have my 96 stitches on my straight. The next step is to turn it around. And of course, since it's a rib, we started back here with the knit stitch. We ended with a purl. We all know that. Or sorry, get in the camera. This is a knit stitch. Remember our... our um, Sorry, that's me. I have like these little moments where I have brain blankness. <laughs> you have to apologize. I, or I have to apologize for myself. Okay, so the slip knot is the um, knit stitch. So obviously our end stitch will be a pearl because we're knitting in the round eventually um, and it's a rib. <laughs> but when we turn our yarn, Okay, that, that pearl becomes obviously a knit. And that's a problem. And I'll show you why, or I'll tell you why. That, come on, maybe if I move my fingers and get it to focus, come on, come on. He wants to focus on something else. There, see it's kind of like all over the place that last knit, we are going to, this is where I, uh, this is still the same way that you sold a, and a lot of books say, tell you to do it. We're going to knit all knit stitches, 
across this row through the back of the loop. The reason why it's going to turn them and orient them the proper way. So if you were just going to do regular ribbon, this will work perfectly, right? Um, purl stitches though, will bring the yarn to the front, uh, slip the pearls tip to tip, we're not gonna work them, and then bring the yarn to the back and then do the knit through the back of the loop for the knit stitch. So that's the pattern. Okay, so I'm just gonna read here. Spiral Companion says, haven't swatched it, well, haven't swatched for it yet. Uh, using a solid maroon color, ooh, maroon. Mm. But I have a gorgeous soft Malabrigo worsted yum in autumn forest that I would, oh, that you, oh my gosh, that I think would look amazing. Okay, totally agree on that. Oh yeah, when you say autumn forest, like I don't have my computer other computer up to check that is that like a yellowy green or like you know what I mean like the yellowy kind of red or is it like that gorgeous green that trees kind of turn when fall comes like the evergreen ones okay so River Beauty 3 I love your name hello by the way um, will these videos be available later the answer to that is yes. Now, the reason why I'm a little hesitant is because Tech Guy was here and then he left. Um, I had messed up my tech. Everyone thought I was underwater because I sounded like it. Um, I believe they will be. If you click on, oh yeah, I'm supposed to say this. If you follow me on Twitch, like this account, you will be able to well, find me easier. Um, and you'll be able to um, see recordings, like the back recordings. It's just, they're like, they're like little, like, um, reruns. <laughs> and then what I do is I usually kind of condense it uh, and try to post it on YouTube and sometimes that happens during a knit along and sometimes it doesn't because it takes a lot of brain power I can't believe I just said that it takes a lot of to do to get it done to upload it to YouTube because Twitch and YouTube are not the best of friends I guess you could say um, yeah but Oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I just have to readjust my chair here. Uh, but, oh, of course, everything's shaking like I'm in an earthquake. Um, but if you need the tutorials, you can certainly um, go to my YouTube channel. And my handle name is just really real creative, Nin Designs. Uh, and you can look at the tutorials there. And I... I've really broken down this cast on um, for people and it's so easy, right? So, I mean, if you're trying to follow along right now and you are able to, fantastic. But if you are having a little problems with it and I'm kind of going past it um, where you are, not to worry. There is tutorials right now on, where did I say? YouTube and you can easily find them. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a look here. Spiral Companion says it's brown and forest green. Oh, lovely. I love neutrals. But then again, I love orange. Like, I don't know why. Anyway, um, <laughs> onwards. Okay, so we just Oh, we just got a. I know I'm going to mess up your name. I'm so sorry. Uh, D F T. 
it goes ba and ds or is it ba and because <laughs> if it's that i think that's awesome <laughs> um it says nin's youtube tutorial for the cast on made it super easy yes you know how late i was up trying to get that sucker done oh my gosh anyway i'm glad that it's helpful um karen you say are you aware this same live format with oh i am sorry i'm like my family secretary because where um i don't have a real job <laughs> I have to do everything for all my family. Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so Karen says, are you aware the same live format with PPL commenting is also available on YouTube? So that way you would not need to do the extra work of transferring to Twitch format yes i am and i asked tech guy like what are we doing then you know and he he had this long-winded explanation that basically kind of like filtered down to i don't know i have no idea but there was a good reason you know next time i come on i will have the reason for that i'll get it from tech guy Tech guy, he's in the chat. Um, tech guy, if you read Karen's just above you, um, the thing about the YouTube, why we chose Twitch over YouTube, I have no idea. I can't remember. So if you want to address that question, possibly. Um, so Saskia says, question: Will you make? Will you make with every cable stitch a tutorial? I just love not having to use a cable needle. Yes, I will, because I hate cable needles. Um, I know there's times when they are needed and they have their proper place and time. There's also some really pretty ones, but you know, honestly, I just want to knit. I don't want to frig with, like, where's my cable needle? You know, I want to just speed through well I shouldn't say speed i just want to knit like a house on fire and enjoy the, every second of it and i don't want to pause for a cable needle and those who like using cable needles ignore me <laughs> okay um okay oh no river beauty three who i love your name um, says that you are buffering badly on the phone. Oh, weird. Now I'm showing my, um, thingamajiggy that is like a icon that tells you the health of the stream. It says it's super healthy. So I don't know what's going on there, but, uh, Okay. YouTube over Twitch. I don't know what's going on with that techie talk. So we'll let that tech guy do all that techie talk. Um, oh, I see River Beauty. You're not, you're not at home. Oh, I'm so sorry. Actually, you know what? I'm going to ask tech guy. Um, Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting the, all the tutorials up with the uh, cabling without a cable needle. Okay. Um, tech guy, if I click on start recording, will I mess anything up? Or, or stop re streaming? I don't know the difference between the two. Oh my gosh, D F T and 
I know I'm saying it wrong, but it's fun. Um, she says she's working. Uh, she's at her work computer and she's doing it illegally. Isn't that fun? Yes, you go. Oh, oh, oh. Well, you don't have to shout at me. That, uh, that guy, you don't need to shout. Okay, I will not touch anything. All right. I'm going back to the tutorial on cast on. <laughs> so we did this the first step, which was, um, you know, like the slingshot method to get our knits and our pearls all together. So now I'm going to do the, um, I'm going to work back this way and we're going to, uh, like I said, we're going to knit the knits through the back of the loop but we're also going to uh, slip the pearls pearl-wise with the yarn in front. And what this does, it, uh, it, it really creates an uber stretchy, like we're talking lovely stretchy band, right? And that's, I find that's really essential for a hat, at least with a pumpkin as big as mine. Like I'm, uh, <laughs> 24 inches of brain power here. I mean, come on, people. Anyway, <laughs> but this hat is so forgiving. Like I had a little fellow and his, his pumpkin was like his head. Uh, I think I measured it at 19.5 inches and it did him great. Like it wasn't slipping off and he was running around and it didn't fall off him. And that's the beauty of designing with, um, with ribbing. I love that. Anyway, I digress. Okay. Um, just to see here. Oh no, Karen's have issues too with the sound. Um, so tech guy says, don't touch anything. He yelled at me. Uh, when you're done, okay, I can do that. Hit stop the stream. Um, Donut Steel says, I also hate cable needles. Mm hmm. Especially when some Japanese stitches call for using two. Yes. And this is what we are doing. The, the one of these, like this is, this is based on a Japanese stitch this pattern, um, Hitomi Shida from her new book, well, from new to me book. Um, it's, it's meant to be a border stitch, but I loved it so much. I was like, what if I made that with a hat? And it reminded me of like beautiful cast iron, um, like, the gates that you see in architecture because I love cast iron like I love it and it's I just find it so fascinating so yeah this is with Japanese stitches and using two cable needles to do a Japanese stitch oh my lord it is so hard but I will have the tutorial how I do it without any cap like any cable needles um, some people might find it finicky or maybe awkward, but with practice, you can just zoom around this hat with so much fun without scrambling for a cable needle. Unless you've got those necklaces where they dangle from me, but then I, I like, I, my hair gets caught and the dog Charles runs up and grabs things and next thing you know, I'm, ugh, anyway. Huh. Yes, um, D F B A A N D D S. I rest I, re I restrained myself. Um, you said, "Oh, is it Japanese stitches that use two cable needles?" I've never heard of that before. Yes, there is a lot of Japanese stitches that do use two cable needles. Um, that's why they're absolutely stunning, right? But if you can get away without them, which we can, um, why not, you know? Okay, so up next, we have our 
we got to do our second part of our cast on. If I tried to do the cast on right now, look at that last knit stitch. It's like all over everywhere because it's because it doesn't have anything to anchor that final leg. You see? You see? <laughs> I don't know if you can see. There we go. See? There's that last leg. What I do to anchor it, I take my ball, no, my I just had a complete moment of brain blankness, sorry. Um, my tail yarn, that's it, sorry. I take my tail yarn and I just wrap it one more time, right around the ball yarn and then snuggy that right up tight to the bottom of that knit stitch. That is what I'm sorry, I get distracted by the dot. That's what's going to keep this knit stitch from going like all over everywhere and messing up. So, where's my needle? Here it is. Oh, it's so weird working with two straights. I never work with straights. I got a lot of them too. I inherited them from a lot of people. And some of them are really awesomely old and have the weirdest markings on them, but... I can't, I can't bear to part with them. Okay, so there is my knit stitch. Remember what I said. We're going to knit through the back of the loop. There we go. Ta-da! Now I'm going to take that tail yarn and just snuggy up that stitch. And yes, I just said snuggy. <laughs> I'm going to bring the yarn to the front of the work. And the next stitch is that pearl. And we are just going to slip it tip by tip to tip. Yarn's in the front. There we go. Ta-da! Yarn to the back. Now, knit through the back of the stitch. As simple as that, people. Like, that's really simple. So I'm going to try to speed through this for the sake of um, brevity or brevity or whatever how you say it um, so that I can catch up with Saskia just got the second band of a hat done. I guess I'm making two at a time. Oh, to be such a good knitter, I tell you. Oh, you made the back of the loop the last stitch. Okay. No worries. Because when we go to join in the round, I mean, it's it's, it's knit pearl, right? Um, you can simply just make your start, like where you place your start um, of round stitch marker, if you're going to use them, uh, so that your first stitch is a... What's that called? Uh, knit stitch. Okay. So I'm going to burn through this if you want to watch me do it. And for those who've already completed this because I was blabbing and <laughs> you had the time, um, at the end of this round, or sorry, row, you would be turning the work and do exactly the same thing. Like, I mean, exactly. Knit through the back of the stitches, or sorry, knit through the back of the loops of the knits and flip the pearls with the yarn in front. So give that a go if you're already finished the this second step, okay? Which I am not, because I chat too much. <laughs> I blame my mother. <laughs> oh no I see my health on my stream is kind of being wonky I'm going to move this up here so you can see there. 
Oh, we're back to health. The stream kind of cut out for a second, which doesn't surprise me in the least because we are having all these weird, like really heavy wind storms. In fact, the house that I'm sitting in, my brother, he's so sweet and he's a bachelor. And I say that because it's so evident when you walk in. Um, he had shingles go flying off his roof. And I'm just wondering, anyone else on the eastern seaboard? Like, did you get that windstorm? Huh? Like, I live out in the countryside, way on top of a hill that's completely unsheltered by any trees. Um, I thought I would be moving <laughs> along with the house. <laughs> that was how bad the, um, the wind was. My poor two dogs, like, I just ignored the storm. I mean, what am I going to do? Nothing I can do about a storm. So it's just quieting the fears of my kids and me. Oh, so it's Jay Scaplin. I'm sorry, I butchered your name. Okay, so you just found theater mode, so you can finally see everything. Cool. Are you on a Are you on a tablet or um, like a smartphone? Because I know that different platforms that you use can have a bearing on um, how well you can see. I really love Twitch. Um, whoa, okay. So Jay Scaplin just said that she is in Newfoundland, which is part of our Atlantic provinces, but um, way far, like east, like almost out in the like really, really pretty much in the ocean. Um, would you say so, Jay Scaplin? Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous lands. I've been there once and I want to come back. <laughs> oh. um, so they're having wicked winds in, in Newfoundland, Newfoundland and yeah. I wonder if any of us had any tornadoes. Was like was that like part of a tornado or something? I don't know. Um so I guess from desktop view, according to Jay Scaplin, if you do theater mode, you can see that I have enormous hands. Like it makes me think back to I'm this how old I am. Makes me think back to the Seinfeld show where Jerry was dating the woman with um, enormous hands and he's so persnick, what is that called? Persnickety, like finicky, whatever. Um, he dubbed it man hands. I mean, seriously, anyway. So I have enormous hands in theater mode. So you can see how bad my nails look. Oh my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, those tutorials that I did for YouTube, oh, my hands, well, they look like this. They look so bad. I've been kind of crafting um, with kids and I've been like, you know, the Halloween costume nightmare stuff. And the, um, I had to wrestle my labs to the ground by myself and attempt to cut their nails with um, like one of those electric dr uh, dremels, which does a fantastic job, right? 
problem is they hate it and I'm constantly giving my my nails unwanted um, dips and divots and being shorn right off <laughs> oh it looks bad but you know hey that's just the price of being like an owner for pets like what is that called being a, a pet mummy is that what it is yeah oh hello um i'm gonna try to say your name right i've been doing very poorly today um Aram, 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 Maria. Anyway, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, but hello, thank you for catching the stream. I'm very happy that you can make it. We're still on the cast on uh, second. Wait, are we on the second stage? Yes, se second stage. Uh, if you haven't, um. If you haven't um, done the cast on yet, no worries. I have a really good tutorial on my um, YouTube site and you can do it there. I mean, it's 17 minutes long. You can put me on like double speed if you want. <laughs> and um, you can catch up and do the tutorial for the cast on. Um, and I really suggest, like everyone out there, uh, I really suggest trying my way of the cast on because it just gives that twisted stitch right from the very edge. Um, I did have a lot of knitters contact me and say that they didn't like it. But you know what? To each his own. If you want to do a, a tubular cast on that's stretchy and gives you um, that you find pleasing, that's the main part. You know what I mean? Like, go and explore and just do it, right? So I'm not going to be like, like a, I don't know. Yarn police. I don't know what you would call it. Pattern police? Pattern designer police? Anyway. And say, no, no, no. Nope. If you want to use a different cast on, go right ahead. But I really encourage you to try this way. Because this is an excellent cast on to have in an advanced knitter's toolkit. Because you never know when you need to pull it out and just make something fabulous, even more fabulous with the polished edge. That's my two cents. Or three. <laughs> okay so let me see what's going on oh I have a very interesting way of tensioning my yarn my mom taught me this um, it, my mom taught me how to knit when I was four because I kept losing my mittens so the first thing I learned how to knit was knitting in the round with mismatched um, DPNs, like double pointed needles, because I wasn't allowed to use the good ones. And I was forced to learn how to knit mittens, so I would appreciate them. Yeah. <laughs> I love mitten, love knitting mittens. And it was so funny. I think it was meant as a punishment, but oh my gosh, all four of us kids, like we, mama had kids, like so close together. Like some people think we're twins, like some of us. Anyway, yeah, so we all fell in love with knitting, even the boys. It was so funny. Okay, so I'm on the very last stitch of the second step. And the last stitch, obviously, is a purl because the first one was a knit. And so we just simply yarn to the front, tip to tip, slip it, and that's all we do. And now we're going to turn. Okay, 
now at this point I would say if you are using if you plan to use the oh, circle there needles you're going to want to you're going to want to change so at step number three i think this is now we're going to do the same thing like i said before knit the knits to the back of the loop and purl like you bring the yarn to the front and purls are slipped tip to tip right Okay, let me see here. I've got a little bit of... Okay, so Jay Scatlin said... I'm sorry, I've, I'm blapping. I haven't read the things here. Um, oh, you didn't mean that I have man hands. <laughs> no, they're just huge, I know. Actually... Uh, I have little tiny hands in comparison to my sister. She has, she has very large hands. Like her hands are as big as my dad's and he's a big guy. And her feet are just as big as his and he's a big guy and she's not that tall. <laughs> but my hands are smaller than my sister's. Um, let me see here. Um, ooh! So Jay Scaplin says, I have the first few rows of the chart done. I am going to have to switch yarns again. Oh no! Unless you want to have a different colored band. Totally up to you. Um, I'm not sure how that would flow with the, the, the stitches. Oh, it's all trial and error, right? Um, Oh, well, thank you. So Jess Kaplan says, I found your cast on easier to follow than Isolde's. Oh my gosh. Like that's a huge compliment because like I adore Isolde. And I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so DFT bands. Uh, says compared to the twisted stitches I thought the cast on was a piece of cake really oh good pavement girl says I think that style is lever knitting oh oh yeah because I use my finger like where am I like I I use my finger like a sewing bobbin. So it's like flick, 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 flick. And the reason why I do that, I don't like dropping the working needle. Now I know a lot of people can keep gorgeous tension when they drop the uh, working needle to put the yarn around. Uh, I'm not one of them. The reason why is because my mother, when she taught me, she's not one of them either. And so this was how her father, who came from Ireland, this is how he taught her, um, you know, kind of trickle down. And that's how I try to teach my little ones who became crocheters just to, <laughs> just to bug me. Anyway. Um, okay, so. That's so funny. Whenever Sus, every time Saskia says something, the auto mod thinks she's saying uh, poopy words. Okay, I'm gonna allow it. I'm like, <laughs> so Saskia, Saskia says, at this point here where I'm doing it now, this is where she put it, it on her her circulars at that point, which makes perfect sense. Now. If you plan to use double pointed needles, I would not suggest um, starting from 
the first of this round, or of the third, our third step. The reason why I would think that would be so incredibly irritating and with needles flopping every which way. Um, if you are talented with double pointed needles and you can control them better than I can, which I am not talented, then I would suggest doing whatever makes you happy to get that into a round and join without twisting. So, uh, like I said, at this point here on the third step, I am going to put into the round by using my circular needle. Okay. Oh, Evenit says, I think I need to watch the tutorial laugh out loud. My brain keeps reverting to normal long tail gas. <laughs> I hear ya. I hear ya. When I was kind of coming up with this, um, it was frustrating, but so well worth it. Okay, so I'm going to knit through the back of the loop my knit stitches again. And per oh, did you see that? I almost purl. We're not to do that. We need to slip our pearls and then knit through the back of the loop. It's critical that we do that because the elasticity um, of this cast on depends upon that. So yarn to the front, tip to tip, slip that pearl, bring the yarn back, knit through the back of the loop. You will notice that the knit stitches are oriented like regular old knit stitches now, but we want them to twist, right? So that's why we're continuing with the knit through the back of the loops. says is there suggestions for suggestions for modifying this for a child spiral companion how old is the child like like or, or maybe what would you guess is the child's head circumference the reason why I say that this hat it's based on ribbing it stretches um, I had a little boy with a 19, 19 and a half inch head try on one of my samples because I want to have a photo shoot. Not a good idea with a little boy. Um, but it fit him fine. He was running around and, you know, doing little boy things. And it didn't go, it did not fall off his head. So... My, uh, my bachelor brother just came home. I'm just waving to him. And, uh, yeah, so. Okay, so. Do, 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 do. Saskia says, I love to knit hats on a 16 inch circular just to keep on knitting. Yes, I've just started doing that. I usually was, uh, um, what's that called? Magic looping. And I don't, I do like that magic loop for a lot of things, but for a hat, when I went to the 16 inch, it was just like magic. Like, it, or, well, magic. It felt beautiful, really natural. Um, now, River Beauty 3 has a really great idea there, spiral, spiral Companion. Use lighter weight yarn and smaller needles. You could do that. Um, 
Oh, I see that your size is... Oh, now, is this the ages of the children? 12, 9, 3, and 1? Laugh out loud. Because it can't be head sizes. <laughs> um, the 12-year-old and the 9-year-old, if you can get them to hold still so you can measure their coconuts, um, I think you don't need to change much at all for this ribbed hat pattern. The three-year-old and the one-year-old, yeah, we're gonna have, definitely, you would need to go, you would definitely need to go with a lighter weight yarn and smaller needles. Um, And J A, I'm sorry, J L A Law is saying I am using DPNs and took the stitches off the straight needle needles for step six. It was just easier to stay on the straight needles while going back and forth. Great tip! That's a great tip for all you um, knitters or, that are DPN um, oh, DPN. Um, can't think of the word. Uh, DPN knitters, fabulous tip from JLA Law. Uh, do all that flipping and whatnot for the cast on up to step six um, and then put it on just before you join. I, I think that's what she meant. Just before you join. Um, So Eve, Eve Knit says, my kids have big heads, even when they were super tiny. Ooh! My six-year-old's six head is only an inch or so smaller than mine. Aww. You know what my pediatrician said to me? He said that the more information you can get your child to learn, the actually it has a bearing on how big their head grows and how fast. So, um, maybe you've got like super smart kids and you're going to be able to like retire early and have them take care of you. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, oh, even it says he steals all my hats. Well, maybe that's not so nice. <laughs> oh, kids and stealing your stuff. I mean, seriously, I know. I once had to go through a playground after school hours to find a hat that I knit and it was the only one um, and it was the sample and the photo shoot was coming up and I didn't have, I don't know what my reasoning was for back then was why I only knit one. Oh. Anyway, the hat was lost on a snow-filled playground. So I went up there and I went all through those two acres looking for that. I finally found it. Like, I love my knits. Okay, so I'm just kind of speeding away doing that. Um cast or sorry the uh knit through the back of the loop yarn forward slipping the pearls tip to tip i think i do this a little bit tight that i think with my tensioning i am purposely do it a little bit tight because i think um i was mentioning a little while ago i i don't like flare in hats I know that I can always, you know, wash them and block them, but just the same. Evenets, if you haven't mentioned, um, what color did you choose to make your hat? Oh, Sis Siskia, I, uh, I knit the twisted stitch the same way as you? Really? That's kind of cool. This 
there's so many different ways to do knitting. Um, like when I had to relearn to knit, uh, um, let's just say I, I, I couldn't use my hands, right? And that's a real bummer. And so when I w went to relearn how to knit, YouTube, I think was there. Um, and I thought I was like super the hottest knitter ever because I knit for years, right? Because my mama taught me when I was four. And then when I started, I found out that I was not an advanced knitter. In fact, I would say I was an intrepid beginner. What a blow to the knitter's self con well, knitter's pride, I guess you could say. Um, not the brand, <laughs> just, the, just the feeling. Um, yeah. But it just made me so determined to learn all the different ways and techniques and whatnot. And that's why I love traveling to um, different parts of the world and seeing what other techniques other like knitters use. And even within Canada and the United States, we have, you know, we're baby nations when you think about it. Um, we have so many different cultures in the melting pot. And depending on who you learn to knit from, you're going to pick up their, uh, their little idiosyncrasies or modify them, which I think is exciting. So Evenit says, I'm using Malab Malabrigo's knives in Arguas, Arguas, a darker blue green. Pretty, very pretty. If you, if there's um, those who are watching and you don't do Ravelry, because there's some people that don't, and that's fine, you know, to reach his own. Um, I'd love for you to post on your social media your, um, how far you are along in your um, project. Okay. Now, let me just think here. Sorry for the silence. I'm just thinking here. <laughs> okay, so instead of joining in the round, I am I'm just going to basically turn the work and knit. The reason why is that I can tell which is the front and which is the back. Maybe you can see it too. See these? Do you see those knit stitches? They're not necessarily as twisted as I would like them to be. If I just do yet another round this way, where are they? Are they? 
this twisted? No, they're definitely twisted on this side. Okay, so I would want to join This is where the brain part comes in. Okay, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, let me just take a look. Okay, so this side is the right side because it's got the lovely twist. This side has the open side for the knits. So yes, I would join in the round right now. <laughs> okay, so how do you join in the round? everyone is different um, you can certainly um, in this design you can just keep your join pretty tight by just simply going into the first row or sorry round of the pattern or you could try some kind of um, like a slip knotty kind of thing um, that I think was his name I was at Vogue knitting live and he did it I think his last name is Bergen I can't remember anyway he showed us a very interesting way where it's basically the first stitch has a um, almost like a collar put over it and depending on how well you perform it it's seamless you don't have to worry about that little gap because there will be a little gap with the, with the tubular cast-ons that you would need to sew up right at the end which is not really that big of a problem but if you don't like that you can certainly um, kind of fix your cast on so that you have a really nice tightness to it and the the thing it is, is that you want to keep it tight because you don't want to have that initial kind of like laddering do you know what I mean like where the stitches are kind of wide and then they go narrow as we go get rocking and rolling through the band. So however you join in the in the uh, round and it works for you and then you get a perfect join, do that. Um, oh, River Beauty, you've got a nice. So River Beauty 3, she suggests I slip the first stitch from left to right and continue around. Hmm. That would certainly tighten things up. It's a good idea. Um, DT, sorry, DFT band says, I just keep knitting in the round, making sure to tighten up the stitches between the needles. Your magic looping? Okay, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, both are beautiful options. So I, you know, at this point, I would say do whatever makes you feel comfortable. I don't think I specified in the pattern how to do the join uh, because I know there's so many different ways. I can show you the way that I kind of, I don't know if it's something I came up with or, you know, everyone, <laughs> Knitting's been around for centuries, and I cannot believe that I have, you know, if I come up with something that it's, oh my gosh, new. But anyway, what I like to do to join in the round, let's see if you can see this, with my giant man hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we need to keep our ball yarn and our working yarn separate. I'm just going to get that out of the way. So here's my ball yarn and the working yarn. Oh my gosh, they're one and the same. Oh. Tail, that's what I meant. So if you've got a good sized tail, you can try this. What I do is that original slip knot see that original slip knot right there oh my gosh look how bad my hands look oh they're so beat up anyway what I'm gonna do is basically pick see that 
Do you see how I got a little loopy thing happening there? And that's from the original slip knot. Right there. All I did was just pull the tail of the slip knot, like where it shows on the tip. Oh well. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you know what I mean. Anyway, so I have now a slip knot that has the part of it ex exposed as a loop. So now what I do is I go over to where I want to join and I look at I look at where I want to do now here's my first stitch right there so there's my first stitch right there and there's like a little bar at the bottom so um having a crochet hook works well for this I don't crochet um, I have something against crochet hooks. <laughs> For all you crocheters out there, you can send me hate mail. <laughs> um, okay. So I basically like stick, stick me needle right, right in through, right in through that little gap that you cannot see on camera. Of course. Like right there. There we go. Can anyone see it? Of course. Focus my beauty. Anyway, we saw it for a second right there. So I take my needle and I go this way through the gap and you see my loop? Now this is why I would say a crochet hook would work better. So I put my loop over the needle and then I start snuggying up. Yes, I said snuggying. The, um, that loop I loop. <laughs> There's so many loops. The loop I loosened. And then I'm just going to kind of catch it with the tip of my needle. Ba-ping! Right there. Okay. So now what I can do, and I hope that it's going to look nice because you know when you're on camera, nothing ever works the way it's supposed to. Sorry, that's my dark cloud. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm going to. Oh, wait, what did I do before? The first stitch is a knit through the back of the loop. Okay, this point, there's two things we can do. We can either leave that little slippy stitch right there, and then when we get around, we can pull it tight just before the last stitch, which is a pearl, and then purl those two suckers together, okay? That would certainly tighten it up. The other option, is to just make that loop a bit bigger, pick up my tail yarn, like I'm gonna reach right through that loop, grab that tail yarn, put it through the loop, and pull. I wanna make sure that I'm making sure that uh, original slipknot doesn't disintegrate like into a big pile of messiness. And I want to make sure that I don't make the first stitch look so awkward. You're like, what the heck happened there? Okay, so let's see if this is going to work. Because <laughs> we're on camera, right? Okay. There's my join. There's that little loopy thing with it, the tail stuck in there. There's my first stitch. 
<sighs> Can I have my yarn on the right side? Oh, for goodness sakes, of course not. It's not in the front. Okay, so here's the test. I'm going to knit uh, the first round of the pattern, which is, you know, knit pearl, knit pearl, right? But the knits are through the back of the loop. There we go. And I'm actually purling the pearls the way they're supposed to be done. <laughs> I'm so nervous. I'm afraid. Like, I have done this before and it looks glorious. Um, so invisible that when I go to sew it up, I'm like, oh my gosh, where did, where, oh yeah, there's a tail. That's where it started, you know? And there's times when I will do that and it will look like a hot, unholy mess, right? Um, <laughs> it just depends. And I'm nervous now because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm on camera and people are going to be looking and they're thinking I'm going to. Okay. Oh, am I totally off camera here with my hands? I'm sorry. <laughs> so you can see I'm just working. I have a bad habit of sticking my thumb right over my work. Isn't that weird? Um, I'm trying not to do that because, you know, doing video tutorials, you really shouldn't stick your thumb on your work. So that way people can see what you're doing because isn't that the point of video tutorials? Nin, I'm like, mm. Okay. Now let's step back and look at that join. Is it gonna look like? Well, okay, from my point of view, it actually looks pretty darn tootin' and good. Mm -hmm. um, from your point of view, it probably just looks like nothing but a blur. Because <laughs> I can't hit the darn camera. Oh, there we go. Oh, no, we don't. There we are. Nope. I'm trying to get it to focus. All right. So. Okay, so Saskia says, normally... I cast on one extra stitch, then slip the left stitch over the right stitch is like decreasing by one. Oh, that's smart. I have heard of that before. Um, and I think I have tried that, but with me, I find it um um i find that my when i kind of loop it over the neck of that you know what i mean the scale when i loop it over the neck and then i start my rounds i'll have an obvious hole you know and then i have to kind of figure out a way to fix it now what is, Saskia says, funny Eve, we like the same. Eve says, da, 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 da. just let me take her. Oh, oh yes, I see what Eve said. said. Eve, that's, that's actually pretty, pretty good too. I usually cast on an extra stitch and slip it and then and knit two together. Okay. So it's, bit, oh, Saskia, so you're not saying like you take that extra stitch and then you make a collar over the first stitch of the joint because I have seen people that do that uh I just can't master that like I, I get like a definite little hole right there in the joint it just like whoa um oh the sound got a little weird sorry I don't know what's going on Oh, I do see what's going on. Uh, the bandwidth is 
the, the winds might be like this is high speed internet that I'm on now, which I do not have in rural area. But if we're having a storm, it does affect it. And I think the winds are still pretty high. So I apologize. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yep, an echo. S. Decker 918 says there's an echo. I'm sorry. How to fix that? I don't know how to fix that. I'm serious. Tech guy's not here. Is it better now? Because I see that the the indicator shows a healthy a healthy stream. So <laughs> Okay. Next time I do this, tech guy is staying with me. I'm gonna make him a I don't cook, but I'll make him a peanut butter sandwich or buy him um, Halloween candy at a discount. Not that, because I'm cheap. And uh, I'll get him a coffee, and that way he will stay. <gasps> Saskia, I would love. Okay, so Saskia says, I wish I could show you a picture of a hat I recently I uh, knit recently, and the join is perfect. Doesn't that feel good? Um, the DFT Vans <laughs> says it is not as bad as underwater. At least I'm not a mermaid. Um, you know how I could see it, Saskia? If you, I don't know if you do Ravelry. But you could um, join my Ravelry group, which has, which has the very creative name of Min Designs. I don't know why I'm not creative with that. Anyway, um, it allows you to upload pictures. Maybe we have a separate section for like miscellaneous chats. I'd love to see other people's joins. So, you know, because I love learning from other people, right? And if you've got a join that is smack on awesome, and uh, it might be something that was taught to you by another person or whatnot, or something you figured out yourself, please, I'd love to see it. The other way to see it, um, if you do Instagram and you use the hashtag W. B T K A L. <laughs> Sorry, I'm slow. I had to like see it in my brain. Um, to hashtag the picture, we'd be able to like when I go to search for that hashtag, it'll pull up and maybe in your story, like or like you know how you can write like paragraphs. It's like blogging. Um, you can write about it. The other option is if you do Facebook, you can ask to join my private Facebook group, uh, which is Knit Without Boundaries. Got creative on that one. Um, it's totally private, so I have to approve you first. Um, but that way, you can upload your stuff. You can even do a live little talk. Um, if you want to, which I would love. I love listening to other people talk. And that way, yeah, we can so totally see how other people join. That'd be cool. Okay. Oh, good. I see that Saskia is on Ravelry. Maybe, I, Saskia, you know what? I have, I may have been talking to you before Ravelry. <laughs> And totally not remembered. I'm sorry. That's a whole um, brain damage thing from my accident. I apologize. Um, so, J L A Law says, I very often switch the first and the last stitch to close up any hole. 
i.e. the first stitch on the left needle is switched with the last stitch on the right needle. But that doesn't always work depending on the pattern. Ooh, I like that. You know how you can do it with this pattern, everyone? Um, you know how I showed you how the slip knot is the knit stitch and then you did the next stitch was the purl. What you could do is make the slip stitch the knit stitch. Oh wait, that won't work. Oh wait, no, make the purl. Better brains than mine can help figure that one out. <laughs> Yeah, I look at your blankets. Yes, you're in my you're in my Facebook group. Sorry, dear. I am so sorry. I like my my knit without boundaries. Saskia makes the most gorgeous, and I mean like heirloom quality blankets. Unbelievable. Okay, so S, or sorry, Jay Scaplin says, would you be able to add a video of that join that you just showed us, please? Um, yeah, I can do that. Uh, I'm just scared and I gotta make it. I'm gonna have to make the video like 10,000 times. Just like I said, it, sometimes it hits hit or miss. And of course, if I'm recording myself, it's a mess. But I will do it and I will post it on YouTube in the little bundle that's for the, um, that's marked uh, the knit along. And that way it's an option, you know. Um, and I think what you can also do is on YouTube, if you like my videos, you can put down below a comment. And so if anyone, like these lovely different ways to join, you could put them there and that would be really cool um i might even do like a little youtube video of me with a whole bunch of things to join and see how i can do them i think i practice first okay so we are going on to two and a half hours um Everyone's probably sick and tired of me, or as I like to say, sicky tired. Um, so I think what I'll do is we'll wrap up today's session because we've got our lovely cast on. We've got our, now we're just simply doing the first round and you have that in your um, part two. Now, if, 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 um, if for some reason that you just recently joined and you did not receive part one, the swatch, which actually has all the information about what the stitches are, it even has like uh, explanations on how to do them, uh, and it has the keys for the, um, oh my goodness, my brain, the charts um you really should have that right because it's basically the very first section of the pattern um part two which we're working on right now if you don't have that i'll make it available for you what i'll do is i'll post the link in uh on my blog that's blog dot nindesigns all one word .ca, and you can just click on the link, boom, up it pops, and you can download it, right? And that makes it so much easier for everyone because my email people, they're kind of um, like, uh, you can only send one email per day, Nin. And I'm like, ooh, that's not going to work if people need to have more than one email sent out. So this is my workaround. Um, for everyone that's in my Ravelry group, um, same thing. 
um, I'll put it under where I put the other one at the top of the description. So you can just hit that and get the first part and the second part. I love that because like I'm losing things all the time, right? Um, and I think I'll do that for every single piece. I'll still mail it out because there's loads of people that don't do Ravelry and there may not be hot into blogs. Um, they'll still get their pieces through email, which is great. I love that. Uh, but if you lose it, like me, you can go somewhere to get it. And I'll even make sure that I do a few posts on Instagram and Facebook saying, you know, there's places where you can get the pieces and such. Because I really want people who are jumping in, like say even halfway through, I'd like for them to jump in. And they need to have those back pieces in order to complete it. And I can't send out those extra emails, so this is an option. I'm feeling so proud and brilliant of myself. <laughs> oh, Lord, love it. Okay, so why don't we wrap this up tonight? today. Uh, if you have your project pages on Ravelry, Ravelry, I'd love to see some updates of those beautiful colors. Um, because, uh, and when you, when you link your, whew, when you link your project page to the pattern, it's going to show only if you, if, like, it'll show in the, like, little picture squares, if you have a picture. If you don't add a picture, um, you can still, like, you still can add your, your thing, but you're not going to see it. You, but if there's a little itty bitty bitty link down at the bottom of the project show like the show the projects going on and if you click that it says um, projects without pictures then you can see other ones sorry <laughs> uh, all right now what was I gonna say This is the nin face I make when I get caught by the police for like, I don't know, a light out on my vehicle or, you know, I'm just like, <laughs> not that I often get caught by the police. <laughs> anyway, I'm being silly. Uh, yeah, so we know where to get the pattern pieces. We've done our cast on, we can knit away tomorrow there isn't a there isn't a, a live stream um but this live stream will go into the rerun section tech guy will do that i have no idea <laughs> um and then um what was i going to say See, I totally got distracted because I saw that I put a tea on the counter and I never once took a drink. And it's my favorite tea. And I just realized I had it with me. Um, yeah. So we're right. And tomorrow is uh, the third installment of the hat. And there will be a tutorial going up because the next part makes this really pretty. It is. I'm going off camera. Oh, I had to stretch. Okay. <laughs> this is my block head. We have the same head size. All right. So the next piece is going to be. Where's my finger going? Lord. All right. So the next piece, can you see that? Is right here. After the chains, we're going to do that lovely, it's almost like a leaf motif because we're going to add, like make some stitches. And when you, if you're working by the chart, you'll notice that there was gaps in the chart, uh, even though the, there was numbers 
into the chart for the gaps. The reason why is because up further up, those gaps become filled in with the stitches that we make. Um, I wasn't sure about that, but my tech editor said that's how it goes. So that's what we're doing. So um, if you're here on Twitch today, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, I hope you'll come back and I really hope you'll come back and watch me. Uh, if I was too silly for you, yeah, sorry, I'm just, this is me, right? Yeah. Um, so, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yes. Please follow me on Twitch. It's free to follow. And yeah. And so that way, when I go live, you will get a, like a little notification, like, bing in designs is gone live on twitch and that way you can join and that way you don't have to worry about looking at schedules i do have the schedule posted but oh thank you eva i just see that my phone just went Bling. eve knits just followed me and that's so sweet are you guys seeing like a little sheep running and jumping like he's a rainbow sheep when you follow because you're supposed to get a rainbow sheep when you follow i'm not seeing it on my screen but it could be because tech guy hasn't got it showing on my screen but i i love the little bouncing running sheep and he's colored he's all multicolored, and it's just like a little thank you for joining and i do i do thank you for joining me today and for following me today that's what the little sheep does he celebrates the following uh oh no stitches oh there we are stitches wow i see the sheep do you see the sheep oh i just saw it anyone else see it or am i like oh there it is oh there's a delay <gasps> Okay. Yay! There's a happy dancing sh little bouncy sheep. I mean, the simplest things, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys are going to think I'm totally weird. Anyway, I'm just going to let the bouncy sheeps happen for a little bit. Because um, it's fun. And... I'm going to sign off in about five minutes. I thank you for joining me. I know that it, right now it's probably either really late for some of you or it's like got to get lunch started or supper started. So I really appreciate you taking out the time and joining me today. There is... Oh! Jay Scaplin says, I saw the sheep on screen, but not how to follow. Can someone answer that in the chat? Because the way Tech Guy has got this set up, like, I have no clue. There must be something, uh, like, along the sides where the chat is for you or the top of the browser window. Uh, I don't know. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bad and I'm going to move my camera so that you can see what I see. I already showed the Instagram, but watch this. So this is what I see. There's my downward camera and then over here is another big computer, which I do not know what it does, but it's important. And here is my Mac, where that's my Mac screen. So it's like the third computer that helps. And there's me. <laughs> um, that helps doing um, to do this live 
helps stream and helps me put things together. Ooh, watch tech guys. I know he's probably watching right now and I'm gonna get a little shout. Oh well. Oh hey, um D F T Dance <laughs> says there's there's a heart. Uh and if you click on that, you should get the bouncy little following sheet. Um, now, even it said, I saw a box at the top right of the video window. Depending on how you're viewing, like what device you're viewing this on, it may be somewhere different and they may have a different way of doing it. I thought that was a bouncy sheet message, but it wasn't. It's more of my family members wanting me to do things for them. So with that said, I'll sign off. Tomorrow you'll receive the next step. There will be tutorials on YouTube. I would love for you to join my, um, what was it? Well, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be awesome. Um, I'd love for you to join my, uh, what was that called? Facebook group, which is Knit Without Boundaries. I got creative with that one. Or my Ravelry group, which is um, Knit Designs. Or uh, if, you, if, you, if you do um, Instagram, I am, I think I'm, Nin Designs as well, or Nin Designs Knitwear. Kind of boring. Anyway, those are different ways to find um, find me and ways that I can communicate with you. Um, I let you know what's going on, and there will be the uh, tutorials tomorrow. There will be the third installment of the pattern tomorrow. No live stream for tomorrow. But I will be doing maybe an Instagram live just to say hello and see what's going on. Saskia says, night. Yes, I'm babbling. I'm sorry, Saskia. All right, good night, everyone. I'm going to turn it off now, and I have to figure out how to do that because it's been a while. All right. Thank you.